What's up guys, Mike from Rockville, and today we are looking at how to install an amplifier into your car. Now every car is different, but the practices applied are the same. Today we're going to be installing a DB12 monoblock amplifier into the trunk of our vehicle to power a subwoofer. The amplifier requires two things to work effectively, power and signal to play music. The power we are going to get from our car battery and the signal we are going to get from our head unit. In a really simple overview, we are going to be running a power line from the positive terminal of our car battery all the way to the trunk of our car to our amplifier. In the trunk of the car, we're going to find a place where we can attach our ground wire. Typically, you can use a bolt that's attached to the chassis of the car, like a seat belt bolt, and attach the ground wire straight to that. Now, we still need to run signal to the amplifier to play music. That's going to come from our head unit. Out of the back of the head unit, we're going to run RCA cables that are gonna carry the musical signal all the way to the amplifier so we can hear music through our subwoofer. Now remember, if you're doing this install with a stock radio, you'll also need a line output converter to run your RCA cables to your amplifier, or you need to make sure your amplifier has high level input so you can jump signal off the existing speaker wire. Now out of the back of the head unit, we're also going to be running a remote line and that goes all the way to the amplifier as well. And what that does is it allows you to turn off your amplifier when you turn off your head unit so you don't drain the battery in your car. Let me give you a quick tour of what we have going on over here, then we'll go to the car and do the full install. So right here I have the battery. In a car it's usually in the front under the hood. Off of the battery, on the positive terminal of the battery, I'm running my power wire. My power wire is going into a fuse, which is then going all the way to the power terminal on my amplifier. So in this case, I'm also running my ground wire off the negative terminal of the battery. But remember, as I said before, when you're in a car, you can run the ground wire directly off of something that is attached to the chassis of the car, like a seat belt bolt. That's going into the ground terminal on my amplifier over here. Now we're going to talk about the signal flows. I have my head unit. In our vehicle, we don't have a stock radio. We have an aftermarket radio. So I can use RCA cables directly to go from the back of my head unit into my amplifier. So that's what I have here. I'm going out of the sub out with the RCAs. And I'm going directly into the RCA inputs on my amplifier over here. This is what is actually carrying the musical signal. So I'm connected through Bluetooth with my phone. I'm connected to my head unit, I'm playing music, it's going through these RCA cables to the amplifier, and then the amplifier is then carrying that signal into my subwoofer. So hopefully from that you can see how really simple it is to install an amplifier into your vehicle. It does get a little bit more tricky when we go over to the car, so let's go check that out now. Open the hood of the car. For your safety, make sure to disconnect the car battery before you start the install. Once the battery is disconnected, look for an area to run the power wire from the battery into the vehicle. Check along the firewall to see if there's any holes you can run your wires into the vehicle. A lot of cars have plugged off holes, so see if that's an option too. If there isn't a hole, you must drill a hole into the firewall. The best way to drill is to visualize how you will snake the wire from inside the car to the battery and see if you can drill a hole in a spot to match that. Make sure to avoid drilling where there are pre-existing wires and avoid places that have extreme heat like the exhaust system. After you've found or drilled a new hole into the firewall of the vehicle, you're going to snake the power wire up to the battery from inside the car. After the power wire is by the battery, we can now begin to lay a path for all the wires from the front of the car to the trunk of the car where the amp will be. We will need to remove some of the rubber floor panels on the side of the car so we can run the wires cleanly underneath. Now once we have those panels removed, run the wires along the floor side of the car, making sure to tuck them in nice and tight. Along with the other wires, we need to run a set of RCA cables from the head unit to the amplifier. Carefully remove the head unit from the dashboard, removing any necessary panels and plastic in the way. Once you have the head unit removed, carefully snake up the RCA cables and the remote line. Now we need to wire together the remote line that we ran up through the dash to the corresponding remote line on the head unit's wire harness. Then we also need to plug in the RCA cables into the sub RCA out on our head unit. You must also run the RCA and remote wires along the side door panel so you can plug them into the amplifier. If you aren't using high quality RCA cables or insulated power cables, you might experience noise if you run the RCA cables alongside the other wires. However, in our case, we are using top of the line RCA cables to prevent this, so we can run all of our wires on the same side of the car. But if you don't have high quality RCA cables, you can run your RCA cables on the opposite side of the car from where you're running your power and remote line. 
When you have run the wires to the back of the vehicle, you need to locate an area where you can attach your ground wire to ground the amplifier. Typically, we can use a bolt that is attached to the chassis of the car. Locate a bolt and then sand or scratch off all the paint around the screw hole so the bare metal is exposed. This is very important to do. Then, put the ground wire underneath the bolt and screw everything back into place. Once you are satisfied with how and where you have run your wires, you can start attaching the wires to the amplifier. When installing the power wire and the ground wire into the amplifier, a helpful tip is to use an Allen key to properly gauge how much wire you will need to expose. Once you have the wire exposed, wire the ground wire, the remote wire, and then yes, the power wire as well, all into the amplifier. Don't forget to also plug in the RCA cables into the amplifier. Once the wires and the RCA cables are in the amp, we can start to cover up any of the panels we have taken off during the installation. Do this very carefully and make sure you do not clip or crimp any of the wires in the process. Finally, we connect our power wire to the car battery. To accomplish this, you have to connect the power wire into a fuse. Make sure the wire from the battery to the fuse is as short as possible. The shorter, the better. And mount the fuse inside the car to prevent it from coming loose. With the fuse we're using, we also want to make sure that we have calculated the proper fuse current handling. The fuse needs to handle the power that will flow through the cable under maximum operating conditions and no more. To determine the maximum amount of current that will be needed, you will need to know the current draw of each part of the system that draws power from the main wire. For example, if we were installing two amplifiers and one drew 30 amps and one drew 50 amps respectively, you'd want to use an 80 amp fuse. You should be able to find the maximum current draw of your amplifier in the amplifier's owner manual. You can round up if the number is not exact. For example, if your max current draw is 142 amps, you can use a 150 amp fuse. Connect the power cable that is now running from the fuse onto the positive terminal of your car battery. After reconnecting the battery, the final step is to turn on the car and make sure the power indicator on the amp turns on as well. That's it, it's that simple. Once you have the amp installed, it's all about picking the correct subwoofer that pairs with your amplifier and wiring that into the amp. Hopefully you guys learned how easy it is to install an amplifier into your car so you can run something like a subwoofer in it. As always guys, I'm Mike from Rockville. I'll see you next time.